Kawasaki and friend of the show, Adam Cien Cirillo. What's up, AC? Not a whole lot, guys. What's going on? Art of sport, you use it? Do you have you has he, have, have you yeah. given Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think in the past few years anyway, I think the like the chemicals basically that are in deodorants and other body washes, like that's I, I know at least in like the training world, that's kind of been a, a focal point. Like I guess it's really bad for you. Some of the like some of the metals and stuff that are in the uh Yep in the normal stuff. Yep. So that kind of scared me a little bit and just have an artist sport and it's on Amazon too, so I honestly haven't even asked for it. I just buy it on Amazon. Really? You don't even ask for it for free? <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't even asked for it yet. Wow. Well, that's nice of you. Uh, well, Art of Sport bringing you Adam Seen Cirillo tonight here. Hey, Adam, look, we just had that. We just had Weimer on and, and Michael Lessie and Villapoto talking about the Spike Club oh, yeah. thing. What, yeah. What's your thoughts on this? What, where are you at on this thing? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it's cool. It's a cool idea. And then. It kind of reminds me of straight rhythm a little bit with everybody kind of fake talking shit and, uh, yep. you know, kind of hyping it up a little bit. But yep. uh, I'm interested to see, like, you know, I think, you know, when, you, when you're growing up as a kid, like those, those kind of feelings that Alessi and RV and, you know, all those guys develop, like kind of, and, and even the thing with Tedesco and Alessi and stuff, yeah. I think that, yeah. that those emotions, like as much as everybody laughs about it now, those still are kind of there. So, I mean, I could see, you know, Mike doing something and then RV just completely snapping <laughs> and putting them both in the stands or vice versa. So yeah. I'm interested. I'm interested. I think. I'm interested, I mean, he I mean, said. <laughs> yeah, not a lot going on right now. So it's, it's definitely a good time to try something new, you know, are I you, think. Are you laying out 1995? Uh, I don't know. I might have to. Get a code. Get a GoFundMe <laughs> together. You know what's funny is so RV said that he only remembers one time beating Michael Essi in amateurs, and then Weimer said he remembers one time. Can you imagine that? One time you beat this guy. Yeah, yeah, that's that would be that would be brutal. I think. Um, I mean, growing up with like everybody makes a kind of a bigger deal, like with like Cooper Webb and I uh, racing together and stuff. But it was never one of those situations where I was like kicking his ass every time. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe I was on the better end of it, but it, it was I wasn't that type of situation for me. So, um, yeah, I, I you, couldn't imagine uh -huh. I couldn't imagine getting beat. Every single time. I mean, th there would be a lot of harbor resentment there. Uh, right? Naturally. I know. Yeah. And, and both guys were like, and it's funny that they were 11 or whatever old they were, and they still remember it, RV and Jake. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the formative years of your whole subconscious mind almost, you know. So that stuff sticks with you a long time. What, uh, what would be your ideal fight club bracket? Two guys. Two guys? Yeah, just your two guys you want to see. Mm, man, like any any year or is it just like right now? No, no, any year, any time. Jeez, man. I mean, fight club. It's hard not to go. It's hard not to go. Chad and and James in '09. That was just right. That was such, <laughs> that was such a good year. I think I think uh, I could sign up for a few more of those races that year together. They were pretty close. <laughs> they were absolutely. Uh, Adam Cien Cirillo on the, on the Pulp and Mech Show, presented by Motorsport.com and Fly Racing. So you're in California. You're starting to test? Yeah, I am. I'm back. Uh, we flew back just on, I think, Saturday night. Yep, all masked up and, uh, you know, trying to do our best on the plane, not, you know, not carrying anything or yeah. you know, stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah, we're back. It looks like we have the good to go this week to kind of, uh, you know, start testing, doing some things out in California with Kawasaki, which is really cool. I'm stoked about that obviously we don't know when we're racing still but um i mean i'm just kind of looking at it like i'm just trying to get everything sorted um in terms of testing and stuff so whenever we do race or if we race or whatever we'll uh you know be in a good spot basically uh how was the flight from florida to california was it empty was it full i, I don't even know I think there was like 20 people on our first leg to Denver, and then from I guess Colorado is pretty open right okay. now. And, and when I went through Denver Airport, it was relatively. It seemed like everybody was kind of 
pretty much back to normal, it seemed like. And I think there was maybe 30 or 40 people on our flight from Denver to uh, San Diego. Hey, we're getting some echoing. Are you using a headset or a Bluetooth, or what are you using? No. This is my phone. What about now? I took it off the speaker. There we go. That's better. Okay. I think that's yeah. better. Thanks. Sorry about um, that. Oh, that's up front. So, yeah, what we, we were talking about this proposed plan to go at the end of May. Um, where are you at on this percent? Do you think it happens? From what people you talk to, from people you know, are we 50-50? I don't know. I, cause some, sometimes I hear people tell me uh, that it doesn't look like it's going to happen, and then it's like, oh, well, it, it's, it seems encouraging. It seems like we're making progress, and I, I really have no idea where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> it's to a point now where even with the team, it's, yeah. you know, even uh, you know Dan Fahey, he he told me he's like, man, I can't, I'm not, like, I really don't feel the need to call you every single time we get an update, you know, because I'd be calling you every 30 minutes, you know, so yeah. it's just one of those things where we're communicating where, um, you know, basically weekly about it to kind of see where everything stands, but mm-hmm. it seems like it changes every time, you know, every time, um, you know, Feld and the teams talk yeah. together. Yep. You know, it's like, you know, I show up, I've been to Florida the last couple of weeks riding with Ken and, and those guys. And it's like, you know, you show up in the morning and Ken's like, well, did you hear we're, we're doing this now? And we're, you know, that's like yeah. our bench racing dis- discussion for the next, you know, two or three days. And then it's something else. So it's, uh, yeah, it's more hopeful. Obviously, I think it would be cool if we could be safe about it just because I think we would get some more eyes on the sport. You know, obviously a time where not a lot of sports are going on. So yeah, I hope uh, I hope we can pull something off. I just heard today Houston was a backup plan. First I'd heard of that. Houston. Really? Backup yeah, plan. Yeah, I've heard I've heard Florida too, Tampa. <laughs> okay, so I never heard so, that, right. Exactly. Yeah, so it's one of those things. It's like you get bits and pieces from different people that are hearing different things and right. at this point for myself, I'm just you kind of have to put yourself in the which is it kind of sucks for us, right? Cuz you either want to be on vacation or you want to be getting ready to race. Yeah. And yeah. It's like right now, I think, you know, just knowing that, you know, my friends that race, it's, you know, some guys are kind of doing the full schedule. Some guys are barely riding and, you know, barely training. It's, I mean, it's one of those things for me where I need to mentally tell myself I'm racing. And so I've pretty much been doing everything, um, you know, everything yeah. I've been, you know, I normally do. So Yeah, and, and there's a chance this thing doesn't work. And then the first national is July 4th. And we're another two months. Yep, there's another yep. two months. Like there's yeah, there's a chance, it, yeah, that'd be ins- insane. Yeah, and I've heard too, like that's kind of that's kind of uh, you know a little bit of a stretch there, even with that. So who knows? Yep. I'm just I'm trying to be ready, and and at this point, like with how much break we've had, I'm almost mentally trying to look at you know whenever we do start racing as my second season in the class, essentially. You right. know, I feel like I want my rookie season to be over, and I you know I feel like now <laughs> I've had some time to right. to regroup and. Uh, you know, just kind of go over some things. I feel like it's year two already. Does it matter to you? You're out of the championship thing. Uh, Eli and Kenny are, and Coop are going to be battling this thing to the, to the end. Does it matter to you uh, if we finish Supercross first and go to outdoors or do outdoors and go to Supercross? Like, either way, do you care? Does it matter? I mean, I obviously love both series, and I think they're both uh, very important to our sport. I mean, I would – Personally, for me, I would love to get going with Supercross if it is safe and if there is a way to do it. Not that I want to be stupid about it, but I'd like to race yep. as soon as possible. Because like I said, I think that's a really good opportunity for the sport to get some extra eyes on it. And listen, we know it's never going to be football or basketball or even hockey or anything like that. But right. um, I think I think that would be uh, pretty big for us right now. You know, even uh, I think just the... the the opportunity to, to be in front of some more people is, is something I would be stoked on. So wow. I would like to do Supercross first, yep, if possible. Yep. But um, however it works, you know I'm, you know I know everybody's doing their best. Yeah. Uh, Seven zero two five eight six Pulp. You got a question for Adam Cinsarilla? Brought to you by Artisport dot com. Uh, we're gonna give away an Artisport kit. Let's do that in honor of Adam buying the stuff, even though Kenny can give it to him <laughs> for free. Um, we're gonna give away a whole a whole kit contest at pulpamexshow dot com. For the Art of Sport uh, drawing, so uh, enter contest at pulpmxshow.com if you want to win uh, a care kit from the folks at artofsport.com. Um, listen, I never mind about Kenny and Sexton. House Troll Train. House Troll. No, oh, dude, fit. 
very fit. Very fit. It's funny. He's one of those guys, you know, he kind of, not to blow him out or anything, but like off-season Al is a lot different than in-season Al uh-huh. in, in terms of, um, yeah, what he's I doing. Guess, f- yep. physical right. appearance. Right. Physical appearance. And off-season, I was just giving him uh, crap the other day. Because off season out didn't have his jersey off too much in the shop, <laughs> but now in season, in season, Amar is shirtless at all times, dude. I mean, I swear he's the last one on the track um, every day because he's got his jersey off for so long. Like, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah, no, I know. I think uh, uh, off season now likes the wine a little bit. I think there's a oh, lot yeah. of that. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I love the wine. Um, you no, got a question for good. for Adam, Andy? Yeah. <clears throat> Hey, Adam, Andy from Guts. Um, just kind of thinking since this season's a little different and, um, like, if if the season was going normal and you had an injury, you'd obviously be focusing on getting your injury back and getting back to the races. But during this time, have you really f- found something like a hobby or something that you've never really imagined doing that you picked up during this time period, um, sure. not knowing when you're going to race again? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. No, I mean nothing too new. I mean, I I I golf, so I've been doing that quite a bit. Even today, I actually played thirty six holes of golf. Jeez, so that's a good time. But uh, besides that, um, I, it's funny. You guys are probably going to think I'm super nerd, but uh, so this I have this group of guys now that I'm playing Call of Duty with, and we're like a we're like a legit squad. <laughs> so and it, these other guys, they're actually they're professional cyclists, like Tour de France, World Tour level cyclists. Uh-huh. I've never met them before in my life, and I swear we're like best friends. <laughs> we just because we've just been playing Call of Duty every night. There's this. It's kind of like I don't know if you know Fortnite. It's kind of yeah. the same yeah. basic concept of, you know, it's like a big team game now. It's called Warzone. So we've been really just going at it on Call of Duty every night. So how, and how do you that, how do you meet nothing. these guys? How do you get in this squad? So, um, Lawson Craddock is, is one of the guys I play with. Um, and I met him through power dot that the company okay. that, um, yeah. I've been a part of the last couple of years. He's a part of it as well. Um, and just met on social media and then, you know, asked me if I had a PlayStation and then we, you know, just kind of go from yeah, there. It's okay. just modern day friendship <clears throat> for you. Power dot also big sponsors of the finding stew video series that captured the oh, nation's yeah. attention. Right. Uh, it really did. Yes. Yeah, it really did. Thank you for, thank you to those guys for coming on board. Um, we've been binging anything on Netflix. Like we've watched Pookie and I, I'm into season three of Breaking Bad. We watched all the Tiger King. We watched the Innocence Project. I mean, we're, we're, we're diving in. I couldn't get into Tiger King. I just thought it was what? too weird. I watched, I watched the first two episodes and I was out, dude. Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, okay. Couldn't do it. I'm couldn't shocked. Couldn't do it. Yep. Uh, Breaking Bad, I, start, I tried to start that, uh, like I've tried to start it multiple times and I got to the the last time I started, I got to season three, but I just I cannot stand the characters. I mean, they're terrible, dude. Like the, the <laughs> w- Walt's wife, I can't do it. Yeah, I yeah. Can't do yeah, it. yeah so no, I stopped. I, got I stopped at season three or four or something like that. Right. But we've been watching Ozark. Oh, how's that? that I know. Really P- good. Pookie said really that we good. need to watch that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's super good. I like Jason Bateman, so I'm kind of in on that a little bit. So. Yeah, yeah, he's really he's awesome in it. But uh, other than that, we got a, I'm a big I'm a big documentary guy. Yeah, I haven't seen any good lately. Um, oh, I watched that. Um, what was it called? Um, in the in Oregon in the mid '80s, uh, Wild Wild West, about these people that How moved in there. Oh, was it phenomenal? Phenomenal uh, about this cult that moved into Oregon, this little small town. It was it was amazing. Yeah. So. Huh. I'll uh, check it out. Uh, we got a call for you here from Ash. Ash, what's going on? What's your question for Adam C. and Cirillo? Hey, guys. AC, big fan, dude. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, hey, I was watching an Aussie podcast last week, and it had Coach Rob Beams on it, and uh, he had big accolades for you and your work ethic. Um, he said his only concern was your body getting injured as you hadn't filled out when you were like younger and stuff, and he was talking about like your wall crash in Geneva. Yep. Um, I guess my question is like, in hindsight, do you like you wish you'd changed up your program where it focused more on like strength or muscle or something because you like you were short and you shot up really quickly. Like, just um, interested in your thoughts on like that process. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really good question. Um, 
I think, yes, like looking back in hindsight, I do have some regrets about not, I guess, kind of taking um, more responsibility for the training I was doing. Um, I think being on Eldon's program, like looking up to that for so long, I just assumed that everything that he did was going to be exactly what I needed. And it, that didn't necessarily turn out to be the case. But um, mm. I think in hindsight, I I was I was working hard. It wasn't like I was lazy, you know. So it's hard to say I really regret, um, regret anything. I thought I was doing the right things. But knowing what I know now, I, I probably could have done some things differently. Um, but overall, yeah. in terms of mindset, I think I wish I would have just slowed down a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I, I just thought – even coming back from all these injuries and a lot of the reasons why I was getting hurt so much is because I felt like I needed to get back up to speed like right away, you know, and I'm 17, 18, 19. I still had so much time, but I felt like mm. I was running on no time at all. Like I felt like, <laughs> you know, the world was going to end yeah. if I didn't, you know, if I didn't just smash it right then and there. And it's funny looking back now and just, you know, I, I wish I just would have chilled out a little bit, but I was just, full gas at all times. So I think that's the one thing I would change. It's just maybe my mindset. Yeah, that's that's funny yeah. you say that, Adam. It, yeah, that's the I love that quote where you're just like I thought I had to I thought I had no time, but I had all the time in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's crazy you realize that. Like I realize that now. But then, you know, when you're 16, 17, 18, I was like, dude, my my life's over if I don't <laughs> you know, just go absolutely <laughs> berserk on this Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> smash these 220s you know i think it's just it's yeah. funny how you think yeah for sure hey ash do you want a guts racing t-shirt i'd love one dude thanks uh, dave all right stay on hold we'll get your information we'll send it out all right thanks ash thanks dude just because uh adam said it was a good question that's he's probably in australia andy so pulp mx will pay for that postage Oh wow! Look for, at that for that shirt. So uh, that's a good question. You never right. really get. I haven't really gotten too many good questions like that on here before. That was a good one. No, that's our that's our listeners for you. You're just not gonna not gonna. Have yeah, it. Right. quality. <laughs> right, right. Um, hey, uh, so one of the things we did in the break was uh, our buddy Ron Tishner, a Florida guy, uh, taught you. Uh, had a great career as a factory Suzuki racer and in, in, in Japan and everything. Taught you when you were younger, and uh, also taught Red Dog, uh, of course, and. Um, he got hurt. He needs some help paying medical bills. I reached out to you to see what we could do. We came up with a, with a co-hosting. You're going to come in studio. You're going to sit in on a show. And we bid the right to uh, come in and sit in with you and I, but more you, uh, for a Pulp Mex show. So we did that, and uh, we got a winner, and we, we're going to give some the money. The check is already off to RT. But, Adam, uh, what did Ryan, Ronnie Tishner mean to you growing up? Yeah, I mean, Ronnie was huge. He was the first guy. Uh, besides my dad that really taught me anything on a dirt bike, um, I still remember my very first class with him. I think it was 03 or 04. I just got on a 65, and he was literally kind of teaching me how to use the clutch and shift gears. Oh, and, wow. That, that yeah, basic, Yeah, like huh? that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. I mean, right. not that I was completely right. incapable, but just of doing it the right way. And um, I, I spent a lot of time with RT uh, working on technique, and that's kind of been always my – as you guys know, I tend to just want to pin it, you know, and so that's something that I really needed to focus on um, growing up, and he was he was that for me, man. I yeah. spent, I did a lot of, like, three-day camps with him in, you know, Georgia and North Carolina and all over the place. Did so, you really? Oh, you traveled yeah. and stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I didn't know yeah, that. No, okay. I did a lot of work with Ronnie, and even all the way until, I think, um, he helped me even a little bit as a pro, too, in the beginning yeah. of my pro career. Um, so super knowledgeable guy. Really love the way he does his his classes. They're super fun to get into, like especially as a kid, because you know he'll he'll kind of depending on if it's a normal group of guys or beginners or what have you. Um, assuming it's a normal guys, he you know gets everybody together, talks about the day, whatever. We go out there do a twenty minute moto, and then we would always work sections. Yep. And kind of do the try to have the best time through the section and, and all that stuff and. I definitely have a lot of really uh, good memories as a kid doing doing classes with RT. Well, that's that's awesome, and you're going to sit in studio one show, and a guy, uh, I think, I forget his name, his name is Dave. He won the thing. He's going to sit in. Uh, he was pumped. He was stoked to meet you. So, heck yeah, maybe maybe if this racing thing gets away, maybe we'll make it happen sooner than later. Yeah, yeah. Bring bets while you're at it, and bring Nick, and we'll just. Oh uh, yeah, right. Um, yeah. I, I hey, when I was Timmy's mechanic. 
I want to say 99, or but maybe I was at Yamaha with him. I don't know. I went to Florida, and Ronnie was working with him again. And I'm like, what? And he's just like, yeah, I like to bring Ronnie in to, like, he really knows me well. He can watch me and tell me I've fallen into these bad habits. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, like, yeah, just so, out of the blue. Sometimes you just need a, um, another set of eyes on you, too. You know, and, and I think there's some guys out there that will just kind of, I don't know, almost make stuff up. You <laughs> just watch you and make stuff up, but but Ronnie has a really yeah a detailed eye, and um yeah the way he goes about things is is pretty it's pretty simple, and and that's what I always liked is it's pretty short, sweet to the point, and right uh, you can you can make some major gains. All right, question from Walker on one. Walker, what's happening? Uh, thanks for calling the Pulp MX Show, brought to you by Motorsport and Fly Racing. What's on your mind? Hey, Steve. First off, I want to tell you thanks for getting back at me in the DMs. I definitely went and did the link you told me so I could get a little bit to the show about the tires. Oh, thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, 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 no problem. And my name's not Hammy, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> I was going to talk <laughs> Hammy. What the, I, we haven't heard from him lately. No, Hammy um, called in I, tonight. Hammy called in tonight. Tits refused uh, to take I, his call. I must have I must I must have missed him. I was I was busy earlier. Um, you know, I was going to talk to you. Obviously, we know like. Some of the um, – even Dino came out and said, you know, hey, I did take a pay cut, and some of these bigger factory teams are having to yeah. um, cut their riders back a little bit. But how many of these smaller satellite teams do you see, unfortunately, with this current situation, just not having the money to go racing next year? It's a great question. I don't have the answer. I would think some of them. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I spoke about this last week on the show. I mean, I'm down – thousands and thousands of dollars a month adam i'm sure you've been furloughed by some guys dino talked about it you know the whole industry as a whole is isn't yep. in great shape and we're all taking sacrifices and these teams are so tightly run on budgets that i gotta think walker we won't see somebody survive you know uh, I, yeah i don't mm. know who or what or whatever but yeah it's a really bad deal you know so yeah yeah no it sucked you know you see guys like the jgr guys who were already struggling yeah um coming into this year and you know i hate it for like the chaparral guys um but it, it's tough for some of these teams i just didn't know what you thought about that yeah it, it'll be tough absolutely and i would expect there'll be some casualties which sucks big time yeah so. yeah I, I hope that uh hammy's quad team can make it through next year yeah we all pray for hammy thanks walker yeah right. thanks yeah, appreciate it, Steve. uh adam you know if this season so let's say Subi doesn't happen and we don't we go in the fall you're probably looking at a month and a half of prep before Anaheim 2021. Say it again. A month, what month and a half? A month and a half prep about? for Anaheim 2021. If 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 we go Supercross in the fall. Oh yeah. Well, I I think, and this is what I always say to people. Like this is what I always said to people the past. I mean, I always, but past year or so when they they talk about how long the 450 season is and. Yep. you know how grueling it is or whatever and that's, that's what i feel like is somewhat my advantage is because i almost love the sport to a fault like where i almost some would argue maybe i like it too much and i really like racing and being out there so i i, I think i would be able to use like the i guess the burnout factor for, mm -hmm. for some guys to my advantage i would at least like to think so right um but yeah i mean it's just a whole new dynamic you know i think yeah. You know, none of that off-season boot camp is. It's going to be really tough. You know, guys are going to want a little bit of a break, at least two or three weeks, and then, you know, rushing into testing and, and doing all that stuff. So it'll be, it'll be really interesting. Yeah. And then you're basically looking at, you know, if we do start, um, let's say we start in a month and go from Supercross into outdoors, and you know, you're looking at basically a year and a half of racing straight, which yeah. is crazy, yep. which is absolutely mad. It, it what, is. Uh, as I was telling some, a team owner was complaining to me about this and I said, well, everyone's in the same boot in the same shoes. Everyone is like, this is not good for your team. He was explaining it that way. And I said, well, it's not good for anybody. We're all, everyone, no. everyone is yeah. in that boat. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, on, and honestly, if I have to race for two years straight for the sport to be in a better place, um, I will, you know, I, that, I, I don't speak for everybody when I say that, yeah. but I, that's, you know, I think, and that's what I then that's what I kind of uh you know supports the my decision to want to race kind of as soon as we can and you know I want the I want the sport and like you guys were just talking about I want these teams to be able to you know continue to go racing and you know we need that we need that in the sport and um mm -hmm. you know so I just yeah I'd like to get out there 
So, Adam, earlier you were talking about how um, you want to get going racing, you know, right now with Supercross because with other sports being down, it's going to possibly bring in some new fans, which I, I totally agree with. What what do you think would, hypothetically, what if um, Supercross got a little later start than expected and then forced outdoors into a position where they didn't race this year? And that, do you, you know, if, hypothetically, if that was to happen, do you think that would crush the outdoors in for moving on, you know, in the future, if they didn't, if they were not able to get their their season in this year, um, would it would it kind of cripple them forever, or do you think they could come back? No, I think I mean those guys, Davey and those guys, they they really know what they're doing, and I think I don't think it would crush them. I think it would take more than that to you know to get them to to go away, and and certainly I think the sport needs outdoors too. It's the you know it's very you know, it's our grassroots part of our sport, and I think we need it to, um, you know, complement Supercross too as well. So yep. I, I think I think it would be fine. I mean, it would obviously be a bummer, and it would be a bummer for a lot of the promoters too that are uh, expecting that income this year from having a national. But from that standpoint too, it's going to be tough to have a national this this year, this whole year and have any fans attend. Yeah. You know, so either way, they're looking at some type of hit. So I honestly don't know the financial ins and outs. It's only kind of what I hear. So I'd hate to, um, you know, make any assumptions. But I know Davey and, and those guys over there are really smart. And if there's a if there's a way, they're going to find it. We should run a bunch of races at Millville, and Troll could be national champion. Oh, he absolutely would be. Yeah. What an opportunity that'd be. Oh, fantastic. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. <laughs> uh, I was talking to Phil the other day, Filthy Phil, and – he, yep. was, he was asking me, what's Troll going to do next year? What's Troll going to do? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. Troll sucks. Troll's, te- Troll's terrible. I'm like, I don't know, bro. Oh, I said to man. him at one point, why don't you just call Troll and yell at him? Why are you yelling at me about Troll? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'd like to have a uh, phone conversation with Phil. He seems like a he seems like a um, entertaining guy. He, he he is. He is absolutely. I don't know if we saw, you saw this thing on Racer X Online we're doing with a uh, online draft right out of like a mainstream sports thing that we came up with this idea? No, I didn't see it. You were the number Look, one overall pick, bro, by Jason Wygant. You're kidding me. No, you were. It's, we? So here, here was the thing. Here was the criteria. I, I set the criteria up. I said you had to be uh, the most – wait, was Adam first? Yeah. <laughs> I need to I – need, yeah, you were, I'm pretty sure. Uh, right. For the next five years, you need to – your team manager, you need success in 250 and 450 – uh, motocross and supercross for the next five years. Who are you picking right now? And you were number one pick. Huh. Yeah. And Weege, I, you know, Weege. What? I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed Weege to pick me. To well, be honest with you. He also I, picked I, Justin I, Brayton, so he he was clearly not really listening to the rules. So. <laughs> did, so yeah. Okay. All right. So I was his first choice, or was Brayton? No, you were the first. You were the first pick overall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, and I I was stuck at the bottom, and I had to go. Uh, I had to go Eli. I don't think Eli's around in five years, but I just thought we'd win a bunch of races early on. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have a kick-ass few years if he's yeah. not around in five. Yeah, exactly. That was sort of the point, right? I'm like, hey, I'll take this for now. So. Yeah, well, I might have to drop Weez a little thank you note. There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, uh, AC, as always, uh, thank you for the time, and thank you for uh, stepping up for Ronnie Tishner also. that's uh, That was really cool of you to do that. Yeah, you too. Uh, no, I'm, I'm excited. I always like coming in the studio too. It's not like it's a well, terrible tour or anything. And, so. and that, that RV guy won't be here, be 14 oh, beers thank deep. God. We may be able to speak a little bit. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, no, uh, we love RV. We do. Thanks for the time. Artisport.com bringing you Adam Cien Cirillo. Good luck with everything, and I'm sure we'll, be, we'll talk soon, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thanks, All right. guys. See Appreciate it. it. That's Adam Cien Cirillo, Monster Energy Kawasaki rider. Great interview. He is. He's always a great interview. The thing I like about Adam is is that he has always been worried about the sport. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, you know, if we could race her now, we could get possibly some new viewers because all the football guys wouldn't be watching.